So first of all, I would like to talk about what, what is the difference between the Git and a Git repository. Right? So the Git is a command line. And the repository is the, the place where you actually host your code, where you, you are storing your changes and your files and everything, right? So there are three main Git repositories, the, the most known, let's say. The GitHub, uh, the GitLab, and the Bitbucket from Atlassian, which is the same as Jira and Confluence. So let me show you the difference between those three. So let's start first with GitHub. So I'm going to talk about the free uh, accounts, of course. Right. So the GitHub, you have unlimited repositories. You have three collaborators per private repository. You can have as many public and private as you'd like, but on the private one, only three people can collaborate on that specific repository. And the rest is detail of uh, actions and usage and so on. Right? Let, let's now see the Bitbucket, right? The Bitbucket, the free one, you have a unlimited private repositories as well, but you have a collaboration, a limit of collaboration of five users, you included. So, but this is in, in the total, in the sum of all your private repositories. So in the GitHub, it was three people per repository. On Bitbucket, it is five people for the total private repositories collaboration that you have. So if you have, if you want to collaborate for a lot of people, you can't, right? The sum of all collaboration in your in all of your private repositories needs to be five. But the Bitbucket, you have Jira integration, you have Trello integration, you have CI and CD built-in, meaning that you don't need to have a Jenkins or a Circle CI or whatever outside uh, a different tool, right? You can actually use Bitbucket CI built-in. Uh, and looking at GitLab, the GitLab, you have unlimited private and public projects and unlimited collaborators. So you can share your private repository with as many people as you want. So there is no restriction here. And you also have a built-in CI and CD, right? Personally, I have those three accounts. I have an account on GitHub, on Bitbucket, and on GitLab. But for the QA, for the QA ops channel, I decided to host on GitHub because GitHub has a bigger community. It's maintained by Microsoft. And it's, it's, I believe it's the first Git repository that, repository that came to market and has a huge community. So I decided for mainly these reasons that I wanted to put on GitHub. And since I don't, I don't have a uh, necessity of hosting private repositories. Everything that I want to to host there in the in the QA Ops channel, I want to be public. Uh, so then I decided to go to GitHub. So now let's take a deep dive. So oh, before that, uh, I would like to also show you the Git UIs that are available. Right. So there are a few. UIs that you can use for Git. Uh, you have the GitHub desktop, which is maintained by GitHub. You have source tree, which is uh, maintained by Atlassian, the same as Bitbucket. You have Git Kraken, that's for Linux. Uh, I think for Linux, you also have Git I, which is free. I think Git Kraken, it's, it's uh, paid. And you have a list of others. Uh, I only use source tree and a little bit about GitHub. I don't like you Git UI is that much. And let me explain you why, right? So I rather use the command line because the command line, once you are used to, it's faster. You can do a, a lot of stuff much quicker. Uh, you don't depend on any UI, right? So if I start using source tree and now source tree uh, start to charge me, now I have to either learn a new one or pay them. Uh, if I'm accessing a server, let's say I'm doing SSH to 
a Unix server or a, uh, or a Docker machine, I won't have access to any UI. So having the knowledge of using the command line is going to make possible for you to use Git in every station or every computer in any condition. Right? I do use the IntelliJ uh, Community Edition built-in CI sometimes. For my daily work, I barely use any UI, but sometimes you have to do uh, resolution of conflicts. Sometimes you have to fix something that a visual tool helps you out. But I found that the IntelliJ helps, it's, it's perfect, good enough for everything that I want to do visually. Uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this video, in the following videos, I'm going to mainly do uh, command line. So I'm going to show you now how you can set up your GitHub. I, I'm logged in on my GitHub account. Uh, I'm going to go over to the right here. You're going to see your profile. You're going to click it, and then you're going to go to settings. You're going to go to SSH and GPG keys. I have already one SSH key, which is my transferized Mac. Uh, you have two options of, uh, of uh, accessing your GitHub from the command line. One is using SSH public private key approach and using HTTPS, which is a regular user password uh, authentication. The SSH, it's, uh, it's a little bit more secure because you, you, you also, not only you have the public private key authentication, you can also have a password uh, authentication along with the private and public key. So going to here on the SSH key, I can click generating SSH keys. And I'm going to go to generating a new SSH key. And I'm going to choose Windows. So I'm going to show you first on Windows. So here it says open Git Bash. I have a Windows here. I have a Git Bash already uh, the link for how to install git bash, git bash it's on the description i'm going to select this one i'm going to paste here and i'm going to change my mail for the correct email generating public and private uh, RSA key. Here, I'm going to just uh, hit enter uh, because I want the default uh, uh, location. I'm not going to put password, but if you put password, then it's going to do the both private and public key authentication and a password. And it created, right? So it created two files. You created the IDRSA, which is the private one, and the IDRSA public one. So make sure you never share the private one with anyone. That's the same as your password. You do not share with anyone. So moving forward, uh, here is describing what we just went through. And now it says adding your SSH key to SSH agent. The SSH, SSH agent is the one that's going to uh, manage your SSH keys. So I'm going to do this command here. I'm going to paste it. It's going to return a PID, which is a process ID. And now I'm going to add to the agent. It was added if I do SSH add dash L for listing is going to show that's already there. And now I'm going to go to add the SSH key to your GitHub account. I'm going to choose Windows. And here it gives me this command, which I can do, which is clip. And it's going to copy the, the content of that file to my clipboard. 
So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to create new key. I'm going to do Windows. And this is the content of that file. And I add it. Perfect. So let's test it out now. So if I go to GitHub QA Ops, I'm going to create a new repository. I'm going to give a name version control. It's going to be a pub public repository. I'm going to create a readme and I'm going to put an MIT license. Create repository. Repository was created. So now I'm going to go here and clone and download. Most likely R is going to be with use at HTTPS, which is going to be this one. You select use SSH. You click this button to copy. And I'm going to go to here. And I'm going to do git clone. And I'm going to paste it. Or oh, I already had it. Sorry. Let me delete it. And I'm going to paste it. I'm going to say yes. And now I have version control with the file there. Awesome. This was for my Windows, right? So now I'm going to do for the Linux subsystem, right? On my Windows. Again, how you install, install this. Uh, it's on the previous video, which is the link on the description. I'm going to, let me check if I have the version control here already. Maybe I do, yes I do. So let me just clean that up. If I do a git clone and I try to clone it here, it did not work because I haven't authenticated that yet, right? So I'm going to go with the same process which is settings. And now I'm going to do the same process of generating a key. Let me close this one, generating a key. And now I'm going to select Linux because I'm on a Linux inside a Windows. That's as strange as that sound, but this is what I, um, I do have here. I'm going to put my cracked email and it's going to give me the same options as the other one it's going to create the same idrca uh, public and private but they are in different places i'm going to start the agent it's going to give me a pid and i'm going to add that to the agent if i do ssh add the shell it's there. I'm going to select key. And I'm going to do this is for Linux. I'm going to do they have the same uh, command here, the clip one, but this uh, does not work. I already tried. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a command called cat, which is going to print the content on my actual screen. So this is the content. I'm going to copy, copy the whole thing. And now I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to give a name Windows uh, Subsystem Linux. So I know what I'm talking or which SSH key that is for. I'm going to do that same git clone command git clone and i'm going to get the ssh url and the clone right so i do the version control and it's here awesome so i already did both of my windows let's say my windows and my linux inside my windows Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time for my actual, my actual Linux, let's say my real Linux. 
I'm going to go to the same options. I'm going to select Linux again. Uh, maybe do I have version control? Yes, I do. Already had tried that. So if I do git clone and I do the command here, it won't work, right? I haven't authenticated yet. I'm going to select this command. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to change for my actual email. It's going to go to the, through the same process that we already went. Uh, I'm going to go to Evolve. I'm going to give me PID. I'm going to add the that to my SSH uh, agent. If I do add, it's already there. And I'm going to add that to my uh, GitHub, right? So I'm going to do the same cat command, which is going to paste the content on my terminal. I'm going to copy the whole thing. I'm going to paste it here. So I'm putting out Ubuntu. If I do git clone and I get URL here and I can see it here. Finally, I'm going to show you the difference on the Mac, right? Because the Mac, it's it has some differences, a little bit difference. So if I go back, I'm going to see on the Mac, the commands are a little different here. You just need to copy and paste it. But there is a change. If you are on Mac, here or later, you have to do an extra step. And this is where what I'm going to show you, right? Uh, is the actual file. Here it says you put host, you put add keys to agent, you're going to say yes, you're going to use keychain, yes too, and you're going to do use the identity file of the SSH ID RSA, right? So if I show you my terminal, I do have here a SSH. I'm going to show you, I have four IDRSA files. I have a IDRSA private and public, and ID, and I have a IDRSA personal private and public. All right? This is my Transwise computer, but I have two GitHub uh, GitHub's account. I have Transwise GitHub, which are this one, and I have my personal GitHub account, which is which are these two. All right? So let me show you the config. I'm going to cat the config content here. And it's the same, almost the same as the one that's describing here. I have a host name, which is GitHub. It's a local identifier. I have a host name, which is also github.com, which is actually saying who is the actual host or how it's going to know how to contact this. Uh, the add keys to agent and the use kitchen, and I have the identifier attached to ID or SA, which is the, this is my transferize and this is my transferize. When we go to my personal, we have host github.com dash personal, which is my personal account, but it, need to it needs to have a host name of GitHub because it's where it, it actually is. I have ID keys to agent. I have use use key kitchen yes too, and here's the difference. I have identity file put into my personal. So when I use this host name, is going to go to GitHub, but it's going to use my personal account. If I do not use dash personal on the host, it's going to go to GitHub and it's going to use another uh, private uh, key. So how do I do this? So I go here, I copy, I copy this, 
do I have which control I do? I don't need this. So when I do git clone, I change a little the the address here and I put personal. So it knows. So let me do a cat cat sh config. And I'm going to do git clone. So I'm going to go git clone. And I'm going to paste it here. And now I'm going to do github.com dash personal. Github.com dash personal. And the rest is the same. And I'm going to clone it. And now I have my version control here. If I do git remote dash v to see uh, the address, then I see this is my personal and I have the content here. So that's how I authenticated both two, uh, both my personal and private, uh, personal and professional uh, GitHub. And then you're going to do this last step, which is the same. If I do SSH add the shell, it's going to see that I have two, which is my transfer and my personal one. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so in order for you to receive notifications. If you have like, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and I see you on the next video. Thank you.